Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Sunday, January 24th, 2021. And the subject of this video is, where would the water go if the Oroville Dam failed? And this is a picture. It's a DWR photo of the Oroville Dam that was taken in 1992. It's an earthfill embankment dam located in Butte County, California, USA, about 65 miles north of Sacramento. It is owned by the California Department of Water Resources. And it's the tallest dam in the United States at 770 feet tall and more than a mile wide at its crest. It impounds the second largest man-made lake in California which can store approximately three and a half million acre feet of water. And an acre foot of water is an amount of water that will cover an acre with water one foot deep. And I'd like to say right up front that the purpose of this video is to prepare, not to scare. In my last video, I talked about how the dam was constructed and I pointed out the various factors that give it incredible stability. And it's still incredibly stable. However, by law, dam owners in California must provide inundation maps to show the amount of water that would travel downstream in the event of a dam failure. And I want to have this video here on my channel as a presentation of information that needs to be available, whether or not it's ever needed. So in this video, I'm going to cover a hypothetical sunny day event, which is also known as a fair weather event. And th this can be defined as an event in relation to a dam that is not storm induced. In a stormy situation where water's rising and rivers are running high and uh, fast, uh, awareness would probably already be heightened and people would be watching to assess the level of risk. But for this hypothetical sunny day event, let's assume that there's an act of sabotage or an earthquake that exceeds the dam's designed structural ability to withstand it, or something we just can't really imagine ahead of time. For the purpose of this video, I'm not looking at spillway incidents or damage to more minor structures associated with the dam. And this hypothetical situation is based on a total failure of the Oroville Dam itself. And I want to point out that earthfill embankment dams don't generally just collapse all at once. So this is hypothetical. And as a person who has lived downstream of the Oroville Dam, there's a few things that I would want to know if the dam failed. I would want to know where would the water go? How much water would get to where I'm at? And how long would it take the water to get there? And these questions have been answered with inundation maps that are available to the public. So let's take a look. I've taken screen captures, so we're not really online um, for these views, but I will put uh, references to the actual website addresses in the, com in the uh, description section below this video. First of all, this is just to give you an overview of what an inundation map looks like. It looks like a regular map, and then it's got the blue where the water is. Uh, they're showing where the water would go if the dam broke. Like up here is the Oroville Dam, and this is um, and it has cross sections that they've outlined here. So this is, this is an actual inundation map that's made for the Oroville Dam, but I'm going to be breaking it down into smaller pieces so we can look at it. And then after that, look at a table 
that tells some of the facts and figures about the depth and um, velocity of the water, etc. So, as I said, the blue is the water inundation areas, and you can see this dark black line is the uh, the river. That's the river channel that goes down. And then um, this white area, this round white area, that's the Sutter Buttes, the little mountain range. In, uh, it's down there near Yuba City. And um, it's, it's, um, it's about 2,000 feet in elevation. And that's why it's not inundated with water. All around the edges it is, the water would come up a, a certain amount, but it's uh, going to go around, it's going to flow around that little mountain range. And the numbering system you have at the top is like, this is cross section one and two and three are right up here by the dam. And then as you go down the river or where the river is um, channel is, the numbers get bigger. However, when they get to a certain point, it comes back up here near the those first cross sections, and it starts with cross section number 23, 24, and on through till cross section 33 is the last thing that they have outlined here. And I'll explain that later. Because in general, the, the level of inundation is going to get less and less as the numbers get further away from the dam and the numbers get bigger. But just keep in mind that cross section 23 is up here, not too far from cross section four. And this is uh, the entrance to where you find the maps. I want to read this part. As required by California Water Code Section 6161, the Department of Water Resources, DWR, Division of Safety of Dams, DSOD, reviews and approves inundation maps prepared by licensed civil engineers and submitted by dam owners for extremely high high and significant hazard dams and their critical appurtenant structures. Inundation maps approved by DSOD are a tool used to develop emergency action plans and the maps are intended to provide general information for emergency planning. DWR assumes no legal responsibility resulting from the use of this information. Actual evacuation zones and timing will be determined by local emergency managers who are responsible for specific evacuation procedures in an emergency event. So keep in mind that the Department of Water Resources is not the one to get the people out. If you recall in the uh, spillway incident of 2017, it was the Butte County Sheriff Corey Honey, who called the evacuation order, and the other counties followed suit. Those are the emergency planners who would uh, use these maps in making their plans. And then they should be making these um, their emergency plans available through uh, the information brochures or websites to inform the public of what to expect in the event of an evacuation. So next, when you click to enter that part of the website, you will come to this image and it shows the, uh, the dams in California. It shows the, it, the red, Boxes are the extremely high downstream hazard dams. Orange is high and green is significant. And let me show you right here. There's a yellow dot 
and that dot is just to show you where the Oroville Dam is. It's really covering up the, the red square. That's the Oroville Dam because it's a extremely high hazard, extremely high downstream hazard dam. And you'll see right in line with the Oroville Dam, there's three others. There's another red one. That's the after bay at in the Oroville Thermalito complex. And the two in between are the uh, orange, they're high hazard dams. That's the diversion dam and the four bay dam in that same complex. But today we're just looking at the, the Oroville dam. So when you click on that, then you can see over here, it, it, you're going to click on one of these and download the maps. And the maps are like on numerous pages. I think the one I clicked on was like 20 something pages. So we're going to look at a section of it, some sections of, of the mapping. So here's the first one I want to show you. It's the one like we saw at the beginning of the video. Here's the Orville Dam. And then here's cross section one, two, three. And as I told you, the numbers get bigger as you go down. And so I won't spend any more time on this one, but I want to show you how then it, it just follows the, um, here's, you can see the numbers, cross section 12, 13, 14. And it, the, the water is starting to come back into its normal shape um, of the river. I mean, it's still spreading out, but not like it is near near the dam. And then here, as it keeps on going down, it gets, we're always, we're to cross section 19 down here. And so this is the Sacramento area. It's come down that far. And the last one is it gets down to cross section number 22. You can see that right here. And, and then as I told you, the cross section 23 is back up near the dam again. And we'll look at those numbers. Uh, this chart I'm going to make bigger for the next view. And then we can see uh, what kind of numbers we're looking at. So here's the chart. And as you know, cross section number one was right by the dam, the first uh, cross section. So we look at cross section number one, and these numbers are gonna be really high. The distance from the dam, that's from the center of the dam, is a little over four miles for that cross section. They give them a station number. This is the initial wave arrival time for one foot of water. So how long it takes for the area to be inundated with one foot of water is 36 minutes in that cross section. And the time for the water to peak to get the highest it's going to get is an hour and six minutes. And that peak is going to be 185 feet deep. That's how deep the water will be at that, at that peak. And the peak velocity, the fastest it's going to be is 41 feet per second. The peak discharge, and the peak discharge is an estimate of the maximum flow rate integrated over the entire cross section line. And that rate is almost 33 million cubic feet per second. And the peak water elevation is 533 feet. And just as a reminder, elevation is not depth. So we have depth of 185 feet, and the 533 feet is where the surface of the water is uh, above sea level. So in this over here, the location description says that at the railroad bridge is where that cross section is. That's the delineator for that cross section. And let's look, as you know, cross section number 23 
is, you know, the, the numbers go down, 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 and then cross section number 23 is right up near the dam again. Oh, like it's on Cal it's on highway 99, but it's, um, it's to the left or the west of the dam. So uh, cross section 23, that's distance is 15 miles from the dam. That initial wave arrival time, it's uh, for it to get one foot of water there is going to take an hour and 42 minutes because the water is spreading out that way. It's not traveling and it's um, in the natural channel of the water area. And the time for it to peak is almost two and a half hours. And the peak inundation depth, whereas in section one it was 185 feet, it's 32 feet. And the peak velocity is 16 feet per second. And it's 5 million uh, cubic feet per second is the maximum, uh, the peak discharge. And then there's the water elevation, 136 feet. And I took a look at uh, when the spillway incident happened. I was near section 11 as I was headed out of town and I wanted to look and see if the dam had broken, not just the spillway, the, the dam in this hypothetical scenario. Uh, I was in section 11, 46 miles from the dam. It would have taken the initial wave for a foot of water to get where I was almost eight hours. So I would have had, a little time and then in two more hours to make it 10 hours is when it would peak and it would peak at 46 feet depth and the peak velocity would be five feet per second keeping in mind the further it gets down it's picking up debris as it goes and the peak discharge would have been over a million so that made it a little more like mm, clear to me what some of the dangers are. And then I, I really wanted to say that, let me get this picture fixed up here. One takeaway from this video, I think the, the main thing is that we need to stay informed. And we also, we need to keep decision makers accountable. And I think making them accountable, these maps go a long way for accountability. Um, but know that it's ultimately up to the individual to be prepared. So I think that, you know, one way to keep decision makers accountable also is when there's meetings or when anything comes up about the subject, when you live below a high hazard dam uh, or any dam, is to find out where are the inundation maps and what are the plans? Where do I find the plans? What are the website addresses? And is there any written information available for, you know, so that we can know where our areas are and what the evacuation procedure would look like? And um, one more thing I want to say, I haven't been able to find it in writing about when they make these maps, I'm thinking that they would assume a, a full reservoir when they do the mapping, but I can't prove that. Uh, but that is one question uh, to find out. And that really concludes this video. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share it. And please take care, stay safe, and informed, and I'll see you later.